We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen and amen and amen. Good morning, all. Amen. Welcome with us. Hello. We're together again, just praising the Lord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Amen. Just praising the Lord. So we've had some technical difficulties, and uh, please, God, let it, let it all come out good. Amen and amen. 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 So here we are. Uh, and the Lord Jesus is laying out a really simple parable that has made people cuckoo forever. Because, uh, remember that God's timing is God's timing and not always ours. And we always want God to do things in a certain kind of way. And he is God and we are not. And so, Amen. the what is the timetable for the return of Christ and for the rapture of the church? The answer is, no man knows the time and date, even though some are insistent it's got to be on this Jewish holiday or this something else or this. Nobody knows the time and date. So anytime somebody tells you about time and date, um, they may be passionate about believing that, but but more, more likely than not, they're going to embarrass us. Um, since can't put it down a time of date, but what he's giving us here are uh, our sense of the uh, the um, elements of the season. That's right. When this will happen. So now, it's a it's a kind of a se we're looking at a, a seasonal change here, uh, the season being not, uh, not uh, spring, fall, summer, winter, but rather the intensity of natural phenomena that are threatening. That's right. Um, and as that, that uh, crescendos, that escalates, uh, we should uh, realize that right. yeah, the end is coming. On the other hand, the, those signs are uh, things that we've seen throughout history. There have always been earthquakes and wars and so forth. Right. But it, it, it's the aware, awareness of the uh, in, intensity and the uh, increase of them that uh, uh, is important here as far as <coughs> understanding right. the signs of the signs of the end. Right. So we have, I'm, uh, I'm messing with my screen here because Mike's blurring in and out, and I don't like it when he blurs. Oh, that's worse. It's there you go. Okay. okay. Hey, well, that's good. So we have the Lord Jesus knows exactly what he's doing. Um, and now that he's in the heavens, he is continuing to work out things for his glory at his timetable. One of the one of the principal linchpins of understanding end times prophecy is the nation of Israel. But once you once you understand that, then you think, okay, a generation after that, okay, a generation is twenty years, forty years, sixty years, one hundred twenty years, whatever it is, it. You can't make that number work. Like that's that's trying to squeeze. Okay, I'm so smart. I now know when Christ will come back because I know when Israel was. No, linchpin is the neon sign that says I'm coming home. I'm coming. I'm coming. And uh, if you don't if you don't pay any attention to neon signs, you get you get into a wreck. I mean, it's just not pretty. He goes off the cliff. So. Here, the Lord Jesus has this linchpin, this most important thing where, where uh, Jerusalem is again under um, Israel control. Uh, that's, a, that's a little firmer than the reality. But anyway, they were gathered from all over the world to come back to Israel. And now Israel is not only occupied by, by Jews, but by Muslims and Christians and and atheists and all kinds of people, but but the but the driving force back to the 1940s when Israel became a nation is continues to be astonishing. Yeah, it does indeed. And we realize too at the same time the Dead Sea Scrolls popped up. People don't realize around 47, 48, especially 1948, the Book of Isaiah Scroll popped up. And the book of Isaiah scroll is in a coincidence uh, in November. It was November of 47, right, that the UN put forth the edict that there's going to be a nation of Israel. Right. In November of 47, the same month, the Isaiah scroll 
is discovered, the announcement of it is discovered. It was actually discovered before that, but the announcement of the discovery was made in the same month that the UN decided there's going to be a nation of Israel. And the Isaiah scroll has the prophecy or asks the question, prophetic question, son of man, is it possible for a nation to be reborn in a day? I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds? First of all, you've got a nation coming back into existence after 2000 years. I mean, there's nothing in history you can even begin to point to. Now you've got this book, this scroll that's also 2000 years old. What is it? I mean, how many books survived 2000 years? And you've got two things dealing with the same event, the rebirth of Israel. A thousand generations. In the same month, November 47, of course, in May of 48, Israel became a nation as soon as the British protectorate pulled out. There was the nation with people, culture, language, the ancient book of the Bible, all intact, already in place and thriving. Amazing. Then he told them a parable. We're in amplified version, Luke chapter 21. Let's try 29. And remember, the time of this is that tomorrow, the next chapter, but tomorrow, Jesus is going to be tried and crucified. It's just astonishing to me. You know, I keep trying to make a timeline work and sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. But all right. Now let's talk about a fig tree. Yeah, Luke 21, 29 amplified. And this is the parable of the fig tree that is to amplify the previous verses 25 through 28 that deal with the sun and the moon and the stars, waves of enormous size coming upon the earth, people fainting from fear, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you know, these are these are certainly conspicuous to the point we can't avoid them at this point. OK, so here it is. Verse 29. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they put forth their leaves, you know, and know for yourselves that summer is near. It's kind of amazing for us in Cape Cod to know that the that there is blossoms going on in my yard. There are things growing in my yard and they think that summer is coming. Please, God, summer come. Please. So when you see it now, it's an agrarian society in the sense that there are people with city jobs. There are people with stores and stuff. But in their day, much more than our day, they understand the growing season and the and the crops and the things we you know, there's a lot of people in our cities that have never seen anything growing grass, maybe, but they haven't seen the crops growing. Signs of the time. That's right. But in these days, everybody knew that when the tree starts to bud, hey, it's almost summertime. Yeah. Right. Things are like that are changing now. I mean, we 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 look at stuff growing outside that we're like, wow, you know, or or a snowless winter. Yeah. When I was a kid or you was a kid, there was always snow in the winter. One of the uh, one winter, the uh, Dennis golf courses had people playing golf every 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 day of the winter. Wow. There was not <laughs> now. Hitting a golf ball to me at 30 <laughs> degrees is not any fun because it goes ding yeah. and it, it shatters you. But anyway, yeah. uh, long story that didn't have anything to do with anything. So, 30, 31, please. 31. Uh, Luke uh, 21, 31. So, you too, when you see these things happening, know without any doubt that the kingdom of God is near. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, Verily, verily. Yep. This generation, those living at the definite period of time preceding the second coming, 
That's what is meant by this generation. That's a word that a lot of people wonder how to translate that. What does that mean? Here it is in the Amplified. The Amplified says those living at that time, definite period of time preceding the second coming, that generation will not pass away. That's the generation that sees these signs. That generation will not pass away until everything takes place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Okay, so let's go to Mishler here. So this period from, my camera's picking it up slow. This period from the crucifixion of Christ and before, it is the period of the Gentiles. And then we get to this thing here. It's also the church age. Say again. It's also the church age. It's also the church age. That's right. That's right. So that doesn't mean that no, Jews get saved in the church age, but the church is the thing. And here is, and the Jewish promises are still real in the church age. It's not like God has forgotten the Jews. He can't forget anything. So this is the rapture, and everything is in place for the rapture to happen. Now, you can tell me about other things that you think have to happen. So this is the rapture. The rapture can happen at any time. That's when Christ comes, doesn't land, but pulls all believers up with him. And then we have, Daniel told us that there'd be 70 weeks of years, but we're only at 69. And then the clock pauses for the 70th week, which is the tribulation period. Now, the tribulation period has two segments in it. And one is the great tribulation. What a terrible sentence. We would say horrific tribulation rather than great, because great sounds good. So the first part of this seven year period is horrific. We've got a third of the population getting killed off. We've got massive celestial, but the second part of the tribulation is even more horrific. I don't even know how to say that sentence. Like, if you think that the first part of the tribulation period isn't mind boggling, you haven't read it enough. But if you go into the second period in the tribulation, the second three and a half years, it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it important for me as a Christian for years to know this stuff? Like the after. Right. Because it's prophetic and because the Lord Jesus wanted us to know about it, he lays it out. So in the middle of this period, the temple is rebuilt. Now, like we've talked about, the temple can be rebuilt amazingly quickly because they got all the stuff. They got stuff laid aside so the temple can be rebuilt. But in the middle of this, the Antichrist takes over the temple and declares himself to be God and worthy of worship. So now that hasn't happened yet in the sense of the temple is not rebuilt, but the Temple Mount people are working on it literally every day to have the stuff all ready when the time comes to rebuild the temple. And like Rich has told us, for these thousands of years, there's been no temple. So there's been no sacrifice. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And then at the end of all of this, we get a second coming in Armageddon. And then we get a millennial kingdom, which is a thousand years of peace and prosperity. And then we got Satan released and the final judgment. So this is as clean a chart as I've seen on this. And then sometimes you get these charts with like 10,000 pieces of detail in it. And they make my head tired. Simple works better for me. And so... So this is the layout that I'm that I'm real comfortable with uh, my end times thinking. There's people that don't like this uh, millennial kingdom. There's people that don't like a rapture. But this is this is what I understand the scriptures to say. Amen. 
It's interesting yep. that it, he puts on not to scale here. That cracks me up. Like, <laughs> okay. So we're back into Amplified. My words, heaven and earth will pass away. At some point, we'll have a new heaven and a new earth that it'll be, and the city of God will be 1,500 miles cubed, which means that our passages. Uh, waiting a long time in an elevator to go 1,500 miles. No, that's not how our bodies are going to work. They're going to go zip, zip, and uh, yeah. and then bounce yeah. from heaven and to earth. Hmm. But my words will never pass away. So the, the, the people of earth think that earth is eternal, and it is not, and it will pass away. But God's word will never pass away. Whoa. So then... What does it matter? Mike asked the question. What does it matter to me now, these words? And that takes us down to 34. I think that it does matter. We're going to answer the question. Amen. That's a good answer. Rich, 34. Yeah. Uh, verse 34. It says, Luke 21, 34, amplified. But be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down and depressed Amen. with the giddiness and debauchery of the nausea of self-indulgence. Don't party too hard, okay? Right. <laughs> and the worldly worries of this life. And then that day when the Messiah returns will not come on you suddenly like a trap. Amen. So you want to yeah, want to be focusing on yeah. the Lord's return, not, not uh, getting caught up in this life as best you can help it. Of course, this Life loves to just suck you in and right. uh, take all your energy and uh, all your attention. But uh, no, we have, I mean, these signs are given. Uh, we have to uh, pay attention to them. Yes. Uh, verse 35. Yep. Uh, for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the earth. But keep alert at all times. That is, be attentive and ready, praying that you may have the strength and ability to be found worthy and to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand in the presence of the Son of Man at his coming. So why why does the Lord insist that we continue to be ready when it's been 2,000 years? And the answer is because when it does come, you really, really, really want to be ready. Amen. You don't want to be wishy-washy and caught up in the miry clay of this life. You want to be uh, boldly serving and loving the Lord Jesus and how amazing that that is and in the daytime Jesus was teaching in the ports and courts of the temple but at night he'd go and spend the night on the Mount of Solomon and early in the morning the people would come to hear him in the temple to listen to him. So here we have an incredibly important passage be on guard, be alert Always. Always be on guard. Always be alert. Always be aware. So in, in uh, ancient times, the guard would stand guard duty Amen. every night. Amen. And he'd be looking out and, job. okay, Amen. don't see nobody, don't see nobody. I'll just take a nap. No. Amen. His guard duty meant he had to guard duty. Uh, in the Romans, if you fell asleep on the, on the job... They lit you on fire on the spot, which is uh, a little harsh, but guard duty matters. But don't be caught up in the things of the world. The Lord could come back at any time. And even if you don't think the Lord could come back at any time, you could breathe your last breath at any time. At any time, you, you don't have the guarantee of tomorrow's breath. You don't have the guarantee of an hour from now's breath. That's not, that's not to, that we live fearfully, but but that we live joyously. We could, we could be with Jesus any instant. The second my heart stops, I'm with him. Bless his name. So that we need to be on guard because the world is a crazy place and it'll drain you of everything that's good. But God is good and wants to refresh you and restore you. Amen. Amen. Rich? I, I, Mike? Um, I think yeah. that for me... Um, Every opportunity I get to bring someone to church, to to witness to them the best I can, I think that carrying on, because as a Christian, I believe if I'm not here, 
I'm home in heaven. And sometimes I think, Lord, is that better than being here? But I think about the lost and I think about a lot of this may be written for the people that don't know God and that our position here in life may be that we share with our fellow brothers and sisters or, right. or you don't know that bum on the corner may be the next Billy Graham That's right. that you shared the Lord with. So, yeah. so our position in a lot of this, um, I see it, you know, as, as that we should always be ready, that we should continue and, uh, share, share the Lord, you know, um, Amen. God is just so good. You know, he has given us such abundance. And and why would we not serve the Lord? You know, from mountaintop experiences to valleys to, you know, gorgeous sunsets. Whatever yeah. it is, we should serve the Lord because he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Yeah. And how, how uh, I mean, through all of my sicknesses and whatever, yeah. um, we just... <laughs> We just need to know that God is good and serving him is the best possible option. Yeah. And not serving him is a bad choice because you... I know that. <laughs> yeah. So here we are uh, almost to the cross. Hey, Becky's watching and Barry and Amen. Kathy. Hello, hello, hello. And whoever else is watching that I didn't yeah. catch up. Hi. Uh, we are... Uh, we, we are... We are gloriously blessed here with the opportunity to serve the Lord and to not get frustrated that people have been wrong numerous times about the time of the second coming. And, and passionately, I heard a woman say, I am as certain that this date the Lord will come as I am of my salvation. And when the Lord didn't come, <laughs> we didn't see her for months. Yeah. You think, okay. So understand that the Lord Jesus could come at any time, first of all. But secondly, understand that your heart could stop at any moment. Any Amen. It, heart, 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 boom. You know, you don't have, we think, we think that we have unlimited access to, to oxygen and to heartbeats and stuff. And I've been in the hospital often enough to know you could be gone in a second. Yeah. And, and why not be... Why not love the Lord? If you love the Lord, life is better. It, mm -hmm. it allows you to love your fellow man, mm -hmm. your family. It allows you to be fulfilling the love of God, love God with all your gut, and love your neighbor as yourself. And and yeah. and really, there's joy in that. Every moment. Every moment. I, I've been there too, Pastor. So I can recognize that that feeling of just like always. You know what I mean? To serve God from the morning. Till you close your eyes at night, um, and you, like you said, nobody knows the moment that Christ will be back. But not even that. But in the fact that you don't know when your last breath will be. That's right. So take advantage of every moment. Say I love you. <laughs> you know. Say thank you. Thank you. you know? And if you knew, you were to know, like. Okay, you'll be dead within a week. Uh, you know, uh, uh, party like heck, and then you know, the last moment uh, get no, 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 no. In the last week, you want to make sure that you that you lay out your always. You let your friends know that you that you make that you make connections yeah. and that you make forgiveness happen. Like, yeah. get it get it right. Well, you don't know that you got a week, yeah. so get it right, and so. Um, so you see that the, every time you see the blossoms, you go, oh, it's almost summer. Well, enjoy the blossoms. Um, yeah. God, God has given us blossoms on purpose for, for his glory. But uh, yeah. how, how amazing this passage is, and particularly in light of it being in Luke 21, and we know what's going to happen in Luke 22. Yeah. Final thoughts, Rich? Right. Yeah, it's, uh, this is so much going on here. Two major catastrophes uh, facing Israel, of course, we've been through one uh, with the Romans' conquest. Uh, but the Armageddon is out there. Everybody uh, in the church, out of the church, secular world, everybody knows the word Armageddon. 
as the final conflict. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's out there. We're aware of this. Uh, this. Uh, this. Uh, <laughs> coming to a to coming to a uh, conclusion. That's right. And that, uh, uh, but we as believers should be focused on the second coming of the Lord. That's yeah. right. That should be our concern yeah. nonstop, right. all the time. Not to turn it into a burden, but that is, it, it's, a, it's an awareness that we should live our entire lives by. Yes. As it says elsewhere in Scripture, you purify yourself simply by your uh, looking forward to the Lord's return. Amen. Amen. Uh, so that in itself, as far as cleaning up your act goes, <laughs> focus on his coming. Yeah. Focus on the coming, and that that will yeah. take you a long way toward that yeah. that, uh, that that condition. Yeah. Amen. I think that's what all of have, us have gotten from uh, this scripture here. Yes. You know, right. you you if you're always ready, <laughs> you know. I mean, that's that's a cure all. You know. Amen. God is Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for going to the cross for our sins. We thank you that. That you warn us and you warn us and you warn us again that living sanctified lives is what you should do. Let us love, let us love even the unlovely, O oh Lord. Let us forgive. Let us be people, people of the people of the book. Transform us, O oh Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for, for today, Lord God. Just help me to do good. Forgive me for my wrongs. And help me to serve you and be ready for yes. that moment in time when I'm not here no more. Let me be effective and be a good witness for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord, for your precious word that lays out for us your plan and to see it come to pass as you've described it according to your timetable, is just the thrill of a lifetime. <laughs> that we may take confidence, that we may take confidence in your plan working itself out, yes. that uh, it, it's so edifying to see this come to pass, as you would say. So many uh, have not been blessed, uh, but uh, leave it to us to spread the word yes. uh, that this, these things are happening. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, there's no denying the rebirth of Israel. Right. There's no denying the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. Uh, these uh, these are prophetic events of enormous, enormous grandeur. Yeah. And uh, we th we thank you for everything you've provided for us to have a right perspective, mm -hmm. to live uh, lives of of um, faithfulness and courage that uh, uh, we can take heart, even though. Our world beneath us around here is coming apart. We realize this isn't the end. This is simply the indication of a new beginning yes. which, to which we look forward to. Help us lead the lives that glorify you, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, all. Blessings. Bye.